welcome to the Worldwide Center of Mathematics video series, So You Want to Learn LaTeX. Today, I'm going to show you how you can include tables and external graphics in your LaTeX documents. If you've been using LaTeX to, re to replace your use of word processors like Word or OpenOffice, you may want to know how you can include images in your document. Because a .tex file has to be unformatted plain text to be able to be compiled, you can't just copy and paste your image into the document like you would in Microsoft Word. What you want to do then is first to use the GraphicX package in your document. Next, you want to make sure that the image or images that you want to include are saved in the same directory as your .tex file. Uh, I previously saved an image called duck.jpg into the folder that I'm working in. Now to put the, uh, the image in your document, you're going to want to use the include graphics command, which we'll be copy pasting in shortly, or typing as it were. Now, uh, as the argument of this, you just put the name of your file. If there's no other files whose pre-extension name is duck in the same folder, you can just put include graphics duck if you'd like. Now, as you can see, this puts the image in the document, but of course, what I didn't tell you is that duck.jpg is a 1024 by 768 image and is too large to include in the document verbatim. Now, there are a number of ways to fix this. For example, we could use the scale option past the include graphics command. And if we set this to 0 0.3 and compile once more, the image is scaled by a factor of 0 0.3 and now fits on the page. There are other ways to control the size of your images. For example, you could use the uh, parameters setting the width and height of the image. These take dimensions in centimeters or inches, as well as some other typographical units. Let's give it a width of 5 centimeters and a height also of 5 centimeters. If we compile this, we see that, again, it now fits on the page, but it's also squished uh, in that the aspect ratio has to be sorted to get it to fit those dimensions. If we want the aspect ratio to be unmodified, but still have to ha have it to have a specific one of its two dimensions, we just only pass the parameter indicating that dimension, and the aspect ratio is preserved. Now, I don't usually use CM in, in, to denote uh, dimensions in my doc, but what I use is the backslash line width command, which gives it the uh, length or as you'll see, a fraction of the length of the typographic line width of the document. As you can see, this image is now about half as wide as a line of text would be. Of course, just including a picture often looks awkward. It's basically just left justified and kind of awkwardly sits in along with your text. If you want to make it look fancier, you can put the figure or the image inside a figure environment. So we go begin figure, and this gets auto-completed for us uh, because Tech Studio is nice. Uh, and inside the figure, we put centering to make the figure centered inside the page. And additionally, the, fig the figure environment also allows you to give us a caption. So we'll use the caption command, a duck, of course. And we compile this. And now, the image is nicely centered, and because it's a figure, it centers itself vertically because there's nothing else on the page. So in addition to a caption, we can also give this a label that we can use to refer to it inside the pre-compiled document uh, so that we don't, you, you don't have to keep track of all your figure, figure numbers. So we use the label command for this, and we give this a key, which is any just string of alphanumeric characters. We'll call this fig1duck. and give us some uh, text as well. And then we can refer to this key, which replicates the number that's associated with the figure. As you can see, it automatically says that's in, that, that it's in figure one. But if you put another figure in before this and the figure number changed of the duck figure, this would now say figure two. Now, if you're putting figures in your document, you can also put tables into your document if that's related to what you're writing. This, this is about as easy. We here make a table environment, which is uh, similar to the figure environment. Give it some centering. And for the table itself, we use the tabular environment. I'll be copy pasting the whole table in because it's fairly large.
Now you note the strange string that comes after the begin tabular. This indicates to the tabular environment what the vertical columns and vertical dividers for the table should be. The pipes indicate vertical dividers between columns and the letters each indicate columns. The L means a left justified column, the C means a center justified column, and the R means a right justified column. In the data of the table itself, the columns are delimited by ampersands and the rows are, as you may remember from past videos, delimited by double backslashes. The H line indicates a horizontal line between two rows that you place uh, after the double backslash that ends the row. You may also note that the first space before the ampersand A is empty. This is permissible. You can have empty spaces in your tables. Now we have a table. We'll also give it a caption, uh, calling it a table. And we can give this a figure, uh, we can give this a label too. Now we compile this. And we see that our table shows up with its caption and with the uh, vertical uh, with with the um, columns and uh, vertical dividers and horizontal dividers as we intend them to be. But you also may notice that the table appears above the line of text, whereas uh, in the document in the precompiled document, uh, the table environment shows up below the line of text. This is because figures and tables are what are called floats, in that they float around the document as, as it's being compiled and get put more or less wherever. Uh, in, order to, in order to deal with this, you can pass options to the table and figure environments. So we'll put the figure at the top of the page using a T. Uh, these are passed as in square brackets after the begin environment commands. And we'll put the table uh, here, which is where, where it appears in the uh, .tex file roughly using an H. There are other commands that allow you to put your floats hopefully where you want them to, uh, which I'll be showing you. So a B will put it at the bottom of the page. A P will put it on a separate page just for figures and tables or floats in general. And an exclamation mark combined with uh, one of these other letters will try to make LaTeX um, assign more priority to putting the float where you want it to go rather than trying to make it satisfy certain uh, rules of what it, call, what, what it considers neatness. Getting floats where you want them to go is a really arduous ta task and I've included a link to a Stack Exchange post uh, in the description of this video which explains this, which explains this a lot better than I can. But anyway, now you know how to put tables and figures into your LaTeX documents. Thank you for watching this video in our series, So You Want to Learn LaTeX. Click here to view other videos in our series. Click here to, to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you don't miss any new Center of Math videos. And click here for our website, which has more math resources, including a catalog of our textbooks, which are all, as you may know, written in LaTeX.